Hi, my name is Mike and I'm here to show you Get Baked. Get Baked is a baking automation script for 3ds Max designed to get you great bakes fast. In this preview video, I'm going to give a very quick run through the main features. More comprehensive demonstrations will follow at a later date. So in this scene, I have a high poly model in purple and a low poly model in green. I want to bake tangent normal, ambient occlusion and curvature. I'm going to start by launching Get Baked. Probably the first scene you'll see um, will look something like this. First thing I want to do is choose my low poly. Uh, I'm going to select from list and I'm going to choose low poly. Because of the names of these objects, it's actually going to detect my high poly for me. Uh, but if I hadn't named things in such a way, I could have chosen it this way and chosen a high poly like this. Um, this will have automatically made the projection modifier for me, so I don't need to worry about that. Now my high poly is a very dense model, and in order for my viewport to perform smoothly, although it's kind of okay right now, um, it's often preferable to have a medium poly model and use that for working out the cage and other such things. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to choose uh, a medium poly and I'm going to let it make one for me. Um, this just does a quick pro-optimize on the model. Uh, this is very useful for your very uh, draft bakes because it will use the medium poly, which will obviously be very, very quick. Uh, but it can also be very useful when working out your cage. So now that I've got a medium poly, I'm actually going to hide my high poly and that will speed up the performance. I'm going to freeze my medium poly, that'll mean I don't accidentally select it. Now we can see that the projection modifier is not correct, so I'm going to need to change that. I'm going to go into the cage assist and edit my cage. When I do this, I see the low poly in blue and the high poly in red. It's very easy for me to see where the ray misses are going to be. Now I could work this out by pushing and, and such, but actually I have a feature here called ray cast conform. Um, what this will do is it will uh, perform ray casts and try to work out the proper distance for each of these. Now, it's uh, going to need some tweaking. Um, I can choose to go for either a tight um, wrap or a safer one, uh, which will get certain um, push a little bit further. Uh, and I can choose whether I want it to conform tightly or whether it should be more uniform. Uh, uniform will force it to sort of do an average. I'm going to go somewhere in the middle. Now, something you'll have noticed is that these gaps in here, it's, uh, it's actually found the, the bits next to it, and we don't want that. So we have a maximum distance, which we can reduce. And as we do that, we can see it doesn't catch those ones. So that's looking pretty good as a good starting point. Um, but I want to make a few more adjustments to make sure I don't have any misses. To do that, I can actually, uh, because this is now an editable poly, I'm going to use the um, graphite modeling tools to uh, push conform, sorry, to, to push the uh, cage out a little bit. So I'm going to use the push pull here and just use it as a brush. Now, I probably want uh, symmetry on here, and I don't have symmetry, so let's do that. So now as I, as I push, it will do it on both sides. Um, and fix both sides at once and get me a nice symmetrical cage. There we go. Uh, I'm done editing my cage and we're ready to go. So to perform my bakes, I have a selection of different bakes that I can choose from. My resolution is up here, my quality is up here. These are just things that uh, speed up the process of choosing these um, qualities and resolutions, just much quicker to use. Um, I can queue up several bakes by selecting them like this or making a selection of the common bakes. Uh, I'm going to choose none there, or I can bake them one at a time pushing this little button here. Let's see what the UV wires bake looks like. If I click this once, away it goes making a UV wires bake. Uh, that's now completed, so let's preview that. When I click the preview button, uh, two things happen. One, it applies a new uh, material to my geometry, my low poly geometry, but it also makes a preview plane, which I can use uh, to see what that, that bake looks like. So I'm just going to move that so it's a little easier to see. And then let's try doing some other bakes. So I said that I wanted to do uh, ambient occlusion, tangent normal, and curvature. If I do tangent normal, this one here, it will do the tangent normal bake in max. Uh, just off screen, it's launched the uh, preview pane, which has gone away and done that. And it's immediately showing me my results here. And that looks pretty nice. Um, to do the ambient occlusion, um, I can just do the same thing again, or I can queue them up like this. Um, but for curvature, we need uh, to use xnormal, because that's not a feature that uh, 3ds Max has. So any of these bakes with a little x next to them, those are x normal bakes. Um, in order to do those, I need to export my geometry. Uh, so I can either do that either by clicking the little export button next to it, or I can just queue them up um, so that they happen immediately prior to performing the curvature bake. So let's queue those up. And instead of using uh, 3ds Max ambient occlusion, let's use um, x normal ambient occlusion. And let's hit bake now. Um, because the duration for this is expected to be quite long, it's just warning me. It's going to take about a minute. Um, so I'm going to do that. So where it goes doing the exports, and once those are complete, it will launch XNormal, um, which will 
not require any user interface stuff. You just sort of sit back and, and away it goes. So I'll probably just fast forward this bit now. Okay, so that's completed. Uh, it took about a minute. Uh, let's see uh, let's see what this looks like. So having a look at the curvature, we can see that it's picked up the uh, sort of the both the cavities and the convexities of this of the geometry, um, which is quite nice. Uh, the ambient occlusion, I can say, is probably not going to look so great because these were quite low settings um, for um, to be using with uh, with X normal. Um, I found uh, until you go to the highest sort of slower settings, the X normal ambient occlusion tends not to look quite so nice as the uh, 3ds Max one. Um, but that's why we've got the options. So we've got the ambient occlusion in Max and, and X normal. Um, that's a brief overview of the sort of workflow um, to get your bags. Uh, some of the extra features that I'll, I'll just show you now. Um, we have some tools for um, exploding your geometry if you've got different material IDs. Um, if you've got many different elements within your model, uh, you can uh, set material IDs to be unique per element um, and then project those material IDs to your high poly model. Um, this will mean that we don't catch any um, any elements that we don't want to by using uh, utilizing 3ds Max's uh, hit only matching material IDs feature, which is very very nice. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of things there. Moving some UVs around. Uh, the cage assist you've already seen uh, most most of that there. If you want to open any of the uh, bakes in Photoshop or whatever your default um, program is for opening uh, these text files, uh, we just hit the little open button and away we go. We see the the bake in uh, Photoshop. Uh, so that's nice and easy. Just to show you some of the bakes available um, on this model. Um, UV wires, useful for texturing. Same sort of thing with UV solids. Uh, material ID, uh, on this case I just threw some different material IDs on kind of randomly, but this is particularly useful for maybe uh, hard surface modeling where you've got different elements and things. Uh, it can be useful for making masks in Photoshop. Uh, world noise is a world based noise. This is a totally seamless noise um, which you could use as a mask for grunge or something like this um, to make sure that you've um, got seamless noise uh, happening all over the place. Uh, low poly color, um, here we didn't have any uh, low poly color, but if you wanted to apply different colors or something, whatever it might be, you know, make a material for your low poly and it'll bake it. Uh, same thing for high poly color. Um, Again, could be useful for for setting up uh, different materials or something on your high poly and baking those up. Uh, ambient occlusion. Um, this is the 3ds Max ambient occlusion and the X normal ambient occlusion. Um, the ambient occlusion top uh, is just kind of a a top down lit ambient occlusion type thing, which can be useful for sort of faking that skylight. Um, uh, curvature uh, again is kind of showing your convexities and your cavities. Um, notice that uh, this appears as grayscale here. In actual fact, you'll have to do that in Photoshop because um, as, as that comes out of X normal, that's a slightly strange set of colors going on. Um, uh, radiosity norm map is uh, only used in a couple of engines, but maybe your sort of thing. Uh, tangent normal from uh, 3ds Max or X normal, potentially useful in X normal as uh, you could create your own sort of tangent basis type thing. Uh, bent normals is uh, world-based normals, uh, which doesn't make sense in the symmetrical model, um, but uh, could be useful for. Um, it includes a sort of the amount of ambient light that a certain area catches, so that, that's quite a cool little technique if your shader supports that. Uh, world normal. Um, this one could be not quite nice. Uh, again, a little bit like uh, AO top. You could use it to see which faces are pointing upwards. So you could use that as a mask to apply say snow or dust to, to your model or something like this. Um, uh, world height is a, just a simple gradient where black is at the bottom, white is at the top. Um, this could be nice for stylization or again you could use this in conjunction with your world noise to for instance um, make a, let's say you've got a building and you want um, dirt to be at the bottom of the building and you kind of want um, just, just a, a fringe, you could use those two in conjunction as a mask. Um, then it, you don't really need to worry about that sort of stuff. Uh, and then displacement is just uh, simple for, for, you might have heard it called height, but um, same sort of thing, um, distance from the low poly model. So you could uh, use that with uh, a pixel displacement, or you could even do a tessellation type thing with that if you if you wanted. 
So this was a very quick um, overview of the different features of uh, Autobaker. Um, more comprehensive uh, demonstration videos with different scenes will, will probably follow. If you want uh, to download Autobaker, please go to um, getbakedscript.com, um, where you can uh, see the change list and what, what's happening, um, download new versions, and if you have any comments, bugs, or requests, um, please add them here, and um, I will get to them as soon as I can. Get Baked is a free script, um, but I'm trying to raise some money for Disasters Emergency Committee, who do some excellent work. Um, so if you feel like uh, giving a little bit of pocket change to uh, a good charity, a good cause, um, then please uh, donate here. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. So thanks very much for watching this video. I hope to see you using Get Baked soon.